largest private car wash owners out there. Enter this lady, Hannah. Okay, guys, sorry about that. I know I'm, you get me staring at the screen. This is my first time learning how to use this software because I wanted to show you this great video. I didn't want to just send you a link, but I wanted to narrate this video because I think this woman does a great job of introducing and explaining what an entrepreneur did. And ironically, it's interesting because she is talking about a woman who's 22 years old who does the same thing I keep telling all my clients for years, and I've been telling them for years to do this, buy car washes, buy laundromats, buy small businesses. These are the types of things that we can easily get into. And and she's really explains the nuts and bolts of how to do it in a very simple way. It's uh, So anyways, I just wanted to uh, throw my two cents in there and com uh, comment on this as this proceeds. So I'm going to play this, and I'm going to let her talk, and then I'm probably going to pause it throughout the video and make some comments. All right, today let's figure out how this 22-year-old makes $7,400 per month. Car washes. How many cars do you think are actively used in the US? This actually surprised me. The DMV reported it registered about 276 million vehicles in 2019 alone, or a population of 328 million. Then if you think about this, this is wild. How many car washes do you think there are to service these cars? Just over 60K. So 60,000 car washes for almost 300 million vehicles. I was feeling a wee little bit of an opportunity there. Now she could be wrong, but this is a good way to analyze whether or not it's worth it to get into a market. Now, this is a national, she looked at national statistic. That's a big number, which probably is meaningless, okay? Because you're not going to operate in all 50 states at the same time right now. You want to know about your particular area. So she came up with these numbers. You can probably get these numbers from the DMV in your town. You don't have to get the national DMV, okay? Your county, probably your county would be the best way to go. There, huh? So even if we assumed all economic factors were equal and that only one quarter of those 276 million vehicles were... And this is a really nice underestimate, okay? Conservative estimate regular cars for us, the rest being, you know, commercial use cars, that means that there would be 1,150 cars for each car wash. 15 bucks per wash, you'd be breaking in a cool 17,250 bucks a month. Even if your local car wash own, uh, car owners only wash their cars once every quarter, that still translates to $69,000 in annual revenue. Maybe that's why Shaq has a ton of these. Do you know he's one of the largest private car wash owners out there? Enter this lady, Hannah Ingram. I love her, she got famous on TikTok. I had a chat with her. She went from college dropout to part-time realtor to full-time TikToker to car wash buyer. And she's from Tennessee, it's kind of cool. She has one cash flow business of choice, car washes, because this first one here, she bought for 140K. It cash flows that 7,400 bucks I told you about per month. Now, hold on a second. She bought a piece of real estate, commercial real estate, for $140,000. I'm not saying you could buy a home for that today, but think how many times you would consider paying that for a home, which is completely a liability. But yet she spent that money on a business and it's netting her $7,400 a month. Why wouldn't you do that first before you buy a house? But long before she was making any real money to buy this thing, she figured out an innovative way to do it. If you go drive by a car wash and it's not for sale, this is exactly what I would do. Step one, I would Google the business and get a phone number, or I would look on the side of the building and try to find a phone number. Then I would make a cold call asking the owner if they would be willing to sell it, if they were to get a price they would want. If they say... That's rocket science, isn't it? It's so complicated. Call the owner, ask if he wants to sell, right? And what happens if he says no? I say, what if you were to get the price that you wanted out of it? You know, at the right price, anything's for sale. If they still said no, I would just be like, do you have any other properties in the area that you would be interested in selling? Because laundromat owners could be car wash owners as well, and they may be willing to sell you a piece of property that they, that's the one you weren't calling about. If they said yes, I would set up an appointment to meet with them. I want to see the property. I'm not going to mention anything about finances. I'm not going to mention anything about seller financing. I'm just trying to get my foot in the door and meet with the owner. This is so important. You just want a meeting with a person who's amenable to selling his business or her business, okay? You want to meet with them in person. You want to go out and meet probably at the property, look it over, talk about it. It's very important to meet them in person. She met with a local owner. When you're a realtor, when you do, you meet people for a living. And so she started talking to somebody that had a car wash with commercial land, three vacuums, six self-serve bays, that's where you pull your car uh, cars in, five vending machines in it, that's where you sell soap and wash and air fresheners, I guess, and two bill collectors. She bought it for 140,000 price tag, not too shabby, but the revenue itself was super interesting because you can see there's images you post them on it weekly where in her typical two week cycle, we see Hannah scoop, I don't know, 1300 bucks in coins out of three buckets, another 960 bucks in another two, another 1900 bucks in dollar bills from her bill collector. 
and brings in right around 3700 that's pretty amazing, right? So keep in mind, when she met with the seller owner, prospective seller, she doesn't want to talk about money, financing, things like that. I mean, maybe the seller might try to feel, uh, try to determine if you're uh, serious or if you have the ability to pay. Uh, you don't want to talk about how you intend to pay for it if, if you are, in fact, going to pay for it. You want to make an offer or get the seller to propose an offer uh, first, okay? Box each two weeks. All right, so this is a perfect example of one thing to watch out for in car wash land. See how this is covered up? That's probably because they got too many fake bills. That's why you want to have coins and a credit card reader because the machines can make sure those are real. So one little sneaky tip for you. Now, 140 bucks is still a lot for somebody. It would certainly be a lot for me when I was 22. And so you might be thinking, girl buys a car wash at 22. Yep, thanks, Dad. But that's actually not the case at all. Hannah comes from a middle class family, one that's pretty reasonably averse to risky ventures like buying 140K property at 22. Before she bought it, she was working 12 hour shifts as a factory worker. And her father actually was a factory worker too. He didn't bankroll this operation at all. In fact, she used $0 to buy it. The answer might surprise you on how she did it. Lots of people make fun of cold calling and meeting people one off, but that's exactly what she did. As a realtor, she was making phone calls to see if anybody wanted to sell their property. This lady didn't want to sell a property, she wanted to sell a car wash. And so she started getting in a relationship with her. She didn't have deep enough pockets to buy it, but this lady liked her. And that value of likability can be huge in deal making. So Hannah used this technique. We talk about it all the time in building businesses. It's called seller financing. So she was actually able to skip the whole 20% down, taking out a bank loan, getting her credit score hit, having to go through an SBA nightmare because she... You see, this is a lot of times what people, they put these roadblocks in front of themselves and they can never go forward. They can never buy the asset because they believe or they or they act as if they need bank financing or this financing, this thing has to come in. My credit has to be better before I do this thing. This girl didn't do that. She just called the seller. Do you want to sell it? Can we work out a deal? She did, in fact, set up a relationship, you know, a working relationship with the woman who wanted to sell. And as you'll see here, uh, there are situations. Just uh, you could spend your whole year or two years or even five years looking for this type of deal. It just turned out that she, she kind of fell into this deal. But it's not a problem to spend a year shopping for this deal like spending an hour or three hours a week trying to find that particular deal because once you do, that's an asset. It's going to pay you. Just took over responsibility for the car wash from the owner. And with all the revenue she made, she started paying back the owner first and taking a cut of the deal. I thought this was a pretty fascinating model because in today's day and age, everybody's always telling me on TikTok and Twitter and now YouTube that you cannot do a deal without money down. But the ways that you can do that are when you have a seller like this woman who was ready to exit her business, who was ready to go, but she didn't have anybody that wanted to buy it. The business didn't make enough money for somebody to run it and buy the business. Very important here. The buyer is willing. No one else is. So you're, there has to be a, a low demand. It helps to have low demand, right? To, to, for, so that way you don't have competition trying to buy this location. Now, maybe the car, the car wash business was really hot in another town over, but in her town there was low demand, or for her particular uh, revenue, it wasn't good enough for many buyers. Her solution was a hustler, young Hannah, who could take over the business and run it for her. The cool thing about this is it's totally replicable. Can you get the exact same deal? I don't know, but I think you get one close. Not gonna be. So let's kind of break down how we would replicate something like this. Cool. So say you like this idea of getting 7,400 bucks a month for about 10 hours of work a week. Maybe you try this. Step one, you pick up the phone. I imagine a lot of skeptics out there will listen to this and immediately go, if car washes are such great cash cows, why would anyone want to sell them? Well, it's the same reasons as always. They want to retire. They're behind on taxes. They're business fatigued. They're relocating to another state. The list goes on and on. But as long as you choose not to look, you'll never find the deals right for taking. If you're like me and you're already juggling a dozen other businesses, that's where the power of delegation comes in. You find your Hannah and you outsource not only running the business, but you're cold calling. It's never been easier than now to find somebody to help you do these types of deals. If you put, I don't know, 20 minutes a day, spending as little as a half hour searching on Twitter, Google, and Fiverr, you can turn up dozens of agencies with a proven track record to cold calling. These contractors don't even have to close your deals. They so she's saying you can find people to make these calls for you. You don't have to spend all the time she did. You need a list or a list broker or, and, and or a service that'll go and make these calls and, and do appointment setting that they're going to get that live possible deal on the phone and set a po an appointment and you call that person and maybe the guy you're you're hiring maybe it costs you 100 or maybe it costs you $400 to get your a, a personal assistant virtual assistant to find that one prospect or those two prospects that booked your booked a time on your calendar and they're willing to talk to you so that person that you just paid $400 it's worth it many times 
to have someone else go through all that legwork just to deliver to you that prospective seller. They can only just give you the first car owners that are willing to even talk to you about it. And it's kind of like I always say, I mean, when you're doing deals in this way, you can try to sit on the sidelines and just learn, or you can learn from doing. So what I do today is step number two for you. I go to LoopNet. Think of it like Zillow, except for all things commercial real estate. With a good old fashioned search and scroll, you might be able to stumble across something like Hannah's. Or you can go to Biz by Sell. Biz by Sell is a lot like LoopNet, just usually not as much real estate. Okay, so you're gonna cold call people. Then you're gonna go to these two sites. Then you're gonna learn about how to finance it, like seller financing. Everyone out there might be telling you to brush up on NFTs and crypto, which probably shouldn't hurt, but you should add seller financing to boring businesses to the mix. Basically, with your background knowledge of a seller, some charm and negotiation skills, you can knock three to four zeros off the down payment that you need to purchase, and you can actually pay for somebody else to let you take over their business through future revenue. It would go kind of like this, and you can see the numbers here that Hannah did. I might say to this individual, hey, I wanna buy your car wash, but I don't have the money to put down on buy the car wash right now. How about you let me run the car wash exclusively, you keep 60% of all profits to the car wash right now, I only take 40% until I pay you back, and then we flip that as soon as I've paid you back your down payment, so the you know the one year's, let's say, profit of the business, then it goes up to I make 50% uh, of the business and you make 50% of the business. Then the next year it goes to 60, 40, flip the other way, then the next year 70, 30, the other way. The beautiful part about deal making is it's just all about how creative can you be. So after we've learned seller financing, then it's about time to get a lawyer. Like with every other property acquisition, seller financing can get a little bit technical and the devil's always in the details. So you hire a legal expert to hash out the finer details of your contract. You can actually click on our website. We have lots of examples of attorneys who do this. For Hannah drying up, her paperwork costs her about 400 bucks. Yours might cost more, but it's worth it to ensure you don't take over somebody else's businesses. And that's a good idea. I mean, sometimes you can get a lawyer, you can get a commercial real estate investor, someone who's not a lawyer, but who's used a sales contract, and if you're savvy enough, if you're confident in yourself, you can write it up or modify it. If you're new to this, you're probably better off getting an attorney in that area that does commercial real estate in situations like that, because there may be some uh, statutory restrictions or benefits you could take advantage of on bad terms. Then you go to improve it. Remember our vending machine cash flow idea that you saw in one of our other videos? You might want to add some more of those. She right now has a few of them, but it turns out that vending machines stocked with not just things to wash the car or clean the car, but with Cheetos and Red Bull, they make some money. So I would add those to the property too. Right now, Hannah attributes a good portion of her weekly turnover, meaning the money she takes in, to vending machines. She has vending machines that do things like glass cleaner, air fresheners, tire shiners, interior sponges, absorbent towels, apparently. Even her air fresheners, which she buys these margins, they blow my mind. She buys these air fresheners for 20 cents a piece and resells them for $1.25. That's a 500% markup. And this is one of my favorite parts of the uh, car wash business because the margins is so cool. Uh, typical margins on this type of stuff is 50 to 60%. Now we're only talking 50 cents, but that actually ain't bad because then you get something like this. This does not cost you a dollar as evidenced by the fact that it's basically a fancy paper towel. You fill up these vending machines and then collect the quarters weekly. I like that they have a card reader on this bad boy. I would probably do that on all of the machines. But this right here at 50% margins is actually pretty ridiculous. I mean, look at this thing. As a realtor, Hannah kind of knows how to pull pennies out of real estate. And that's why she's pushing to build self-storage units on the unused land around her car wash. She's adding ice vending around her car wash. We call this value add, or how you can add other amenities to continue diversifying your cash flow and increasing it. The last point I'll say here is mergers and acquisitions. The car wash industry is one of the few areas where there are very few big players. Even the largest chains don't have a market share bigger than 5%. What does that mean for us? Disaggregation means opportunity. A horizontal merger is one way to expand while safeguarding your cash flow against, let's say, the fact that it's freezing in the winter. So basically, you would acquire car washes up north where there's higher customer volume during the, the, the summer, and then you might acquire some down south that would offset your income that you don't get during the winter. Of course, you could also do what's called a vertical acquisition, which basically means you buy other related businesses that are similar to your business. That might be like, you bought a car wash, now you bought a ice vending machine business, now you bought a vending machine business, and you have this nice little satellite that brings all the businesses together. There's a lot of ways to slice the pie when it gets to doing deals and buying things like car washes. I don't know why more people don't talk about it, except that all of us former Wall Street people like me like to make the two and 20. That's how we do expenses and things like our private equity funds. But the thought here with this channel is we teach you guys how to st stack cash too, because if we all make money together, it's a lot more fun than getting rich quietly. If you guys well, I couldn't make that any better. So I hope that helps you guys. Thanks for watching.